just love the variations on the theme of living things that you're likely to see, even on a 20-minute dive into the ocean. It is amazing what is out there if you give yourself a chance to stop and look. The sea is not just rocks and water, it's alive. In every bucketful that you pull out of the ocean, there are many variations on the theme of life. Diving is the closest thing you'll ever get to flying. And it's just magical, it's colorful. Everybody's into each other's business and <laughs> they're all kind of checking each other out and doing their thing and playing this incredibly vital role in the health of our world. In the 20th century, we learn more about the ocean than during all preceding human history. But at the same time that we learn more, we lost more. No matter where you are, what ends up on the ground eventually makes its way through the groundwater, through the streams and rivers, makes its way down to the sea. So wherever you live on Earth, you have an impact on the ocean. We're leaving a scar that's huge and deep in the way that we've treated the oceans, bottom trawling, overfishing, overpopulation along the coastline. One of the real killers is the silent killer of runoff. You end up with things called dead zones. And we're finding more and more of these dead zones in places like the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic, and the Mediterranean, things like that. For the longest time, people have just equated the vastness of the ocean with an invincibility, that basically the ocean can take any abuse that we throw at it. And as we've looked more closely at what's going on underneath the waves, we've realized that actually we've done an enormous amount of damage. Already today, more than 70% of the world's fisheries are in a state of collapse, and that's a travesty. The world's oceans are now missing about 90% of the top predators that once roamed there. And that's, that's quite stunning if you think about it. The ocean is the cornerstone of what makes the planet work. Take away the ocean and you take away the critical part of what makes life possible, not just for creatures in the sea, but for all of life on Earth. We don't know quite how to fix it, except to do everything in our power to protect what remains of the wild places the extraordinary places where the pieces are still intact. The Bird's Head Seascape, in my opinion, besides being kind of the undisputed center of marine biodiversity for the planet, is also perhaps the most singularly beautiful and just simply mind-blowingly unique areas on the planet. Anywhere where you can see 335 species of fish on a single dive is certainly a superlative. These are exciting things, those species. And, and the best part is that when you're on an expedition, when you find these things, there's something about that that just should just remind you all the time that there's something more to be found out there in the ocean. It's, it's really, truly an amazingly beautiful place. It's also an amazingly threatened place. It's probably one of the last areas in Southeast Asia which still has relatively intact coral reefs and quite a biomass of fishes, so it's automatically attracting a lot of attention from the neighboring regions where people have already overfished their reefs. We have this lost world of amazing beauty and, and diversity and abundance, but uh, it's not going to stay that way if we don't do something about it. Conservation International over the years has developed a strategy for trying to protect the wild places, the special places on the planet that are the underpinnings of our life support system. We are beginning to understand the connections. That makes me an optimist. I feel driven now to try to make up for lost time while we still have 10% of some of these wonderful creatures still in place. Our grandfather said we, we protect what we love and we, we love what we understand. And it's tragic that as we grow to understand the ocean and grow to love it and want to protect it, there's so little left. <laughs>